Now, Nelson Mandela finds himself in a bit of a fixture clash with Fabian Cancellara today. He's not being memorialised, he's still riding. But this is his final season, and the tour organisers have taken the unusual step of paying tribute to an active rider by taking the race across the border into Switzerland and the Swiss capital, Bern, which is his home. There's a cobble climb inside the final few kilometres that would have been made for a Fab's attack in his prime, but today's stage interests too many other teams, to mention data in particular. As we race across the city of Bern now. Jens Rui Costa, a brilliant show, but does he have a chance? I'm not sure. He's holding them off really good, and if it would be kind of like a flat run in, yes. But there's a hill, and he's gonna having used all his punch power so far. He will have nothing left to give once he comes to a little uphill piece. So he's gonna get caught by the peloton and not even make it in the top hundred. A yeah, brave attempt, but very little chance. Yeah, but Jens, you've got to think about the fact that today has not been an easy day in the Tour de France. Everybody is right on the limit. Yeah, but there's still too many fresh legs. They are willing to chase him on for their leaders. It's just too many people behind there. They are still wanting to work and chase him. See there, Steve coming. He just swings off. His job is done. Fresh legs coming in. So I'm afraid they're going to get him before the line. Well, we've just gone under five kilometers to go. And now he's sticking to his guns here. They've said seven seconds under that banner was the official time gap. Riders are being shed all of the time. Take a look at this now. Seven, five kilometers out. The peloton is just giving up at the back. Lots of riders now in serious stress at the back end. Now it looks to me, Phil, as if it's pretty much all over for Rui Costa. You can tell by his body language. He knows it's done. He is now inside of five kilometers to go, being caught by the main field. Caught around four to go. Now there are only eight Swiss riders in the Tour de France today. A, ma a massive crowd has turned out to watch them here in Bern. It's not a number one sport in this country, but they do have one or two major races. And I'll tell you, the city of Bern has turned out in its tens of thousands here to watch the race finish. Now, IAM Cycling, who got the winner yesterday, and Jorans and Pantano also feel they can do something here now because they've moved up to the front. Well, I think it's really, Phil, just because of this approach to the line with the nasty little cobble climber. Oh, look how tight it is as they come around these corners. That's the little hairpin just uh, between uh, three and a half and four and a half kilometers to go. It would not surprise me to see Pantano, who won yesterday, try a move on this cobble climb. He's got the strength to stay clear over the top. I just keep looking down this long line of riders to look for a rider in a black and white jersey. And that would be the rider from Trek Segafredo. This is the nasty little corner round towards the right. It's almost a hairpin bend. Well, as they make the right-hand turn, it looks as though they're getting around it safely. Very close, some of them, to the barrier as the riders continue now. As we cross the river, we run onto a, like a little isthmus here as we get into the centre of Bern. Well, uh, there they go, under the bridge, which uh, links uh, the main part of Bern to the other side of the bridge. So they're getting themselves well organised, but very shortly, Phil, they come through two kilometres to go. And that's when they kind of turn around back on themselves, and that's when they will hit this nasty little cobbled climb. They just passed under three kilometres to go now as they run down the banks of the river. It is a very, very difficult race. There's the cobbles beginning now that reminds us Bern is a very old city. Just trying to see how many rides are left here, but realistically, if you're not in the first 20 riders here, I doubt you can get back up to the front now. Well, that's the big problem, and that's what a guy like Mark Cavendish will be hoping for. Rui Costa, well, he tried, and it was a valiant attempt by the uh, former Portuguese national champion to pull off the surprise this afternoon, but it has been just too difficult on this stage. You can see the red and black jersey still in control of the peloton as we look at speeds in excess of 32 miles an hour, and it's still BMC racing. Well, we're looking for a white jersey of Fabian Cancellara. He will know when it's time to come here. Oh, and they've overshot that corner, took it very, very wide. And I'm not sure, but I think it's Cancellara who's come off that barrier. Well, I'm not it sure. It was probably IAM. It was uh, IAM, it was cycling, an IAM yeah. cycling yeah. rider. Yeah. But I'm um, just hearing that uh, Brian Cockar has been dropped from the back end of the main field. So this yeah. cobbled climb is a cobbled climb just a little bit too far for him. Well, looking down from the helicopter here, it looks to me as though these are the riders who've been dropped. And it looks to me as though he might have fallen off as well there as with the on this cobble climb they're just scrabbling for wheels here at the moment and there's an attack from lotto jumbo here 
inside of two kilometers to go this is the moment if you've got the legs to try and stretch your advantage over the peloton hovering in the front line of the main field phil was a green jersey a dark green jersey and that was peter sagan it's a sort of move i'd expect to see to come from set van mark i can't see anybody else because kelden i think hasn't got those legs but he's given a, a good shot that is Raimunas Navodowska. So he's got a slightly different jersey from everybody else, Phil, because he's the national champion of Lithuania. We're just looking to the left now. We've got the green jersey of uh, Peter Sagan, and just behind him is uh, Degen Kolb. Behind Degen Kolb is Bosen Hagen there, and An Chris Anker Sorensen's in fourth place at the moment. Everybody hanging on, but look at this. Peter Sagan here is organised once again. Well, Roland Bargui is making the pace up the front here to try yeah. and get uh, other riders up. Well, uh, Michael Matthews is not far away either, but Warren Bargiefel is doing the work here, not for himself this afternoon, he's doing for the work the work for the rider in third place, that's his teammate, John Degenkolb. Remember, Phil, both of those riders were in that nasty accident together at the start of the year when they were training in yes, Spain. Yes, they were. That was in January. Now we're in July. They've fully recovered, but what a long, painful road it has been. Warren Bargui, Peter Sagan. What a story it would be if the rider in third place could win this. That would announce to return one kilometer to go it has gone under Warren Bargui Peter Sagan followed by John Deckenkov no white jersey no perfect story yet of signs of Cancellara well inside of the yellow the red flag Phil there, there is a big split in the main field the yellow jersey has made it across and he is comfortably in there Chris Froome if we thought this would be about the sprinters a Richie Port is in this group I've also seen Nairo Quintana they have survived I can just about see Adam Yates a little bit further back as well but this is still Warren Bargui in his second position is Peter Sagan John Deckard waiting for the moment to move this is an incredible group and so is off to our picture to the right hand side you'll see him sitting on the shoulder of Peter Sagan he's being driven by the fact he'll never ride the Tour de France again Mark Cavendish is also mixing in we didn't expect that as now Sagan is waiting Christophe I think has got no chance here the break has come from the far right as we start to go towards the line Alejandro Valverde is going Christophe is coming Sagan is chasing Cancellara is trying as best he can but they're too quick Peter Sagan as they come up towards the line is just well, well I don't, I'm not sure Sure, Paul, I think it could have been Alexander Kristoff. Well, we're going to have to wait, Phil, uh, for a photo again on that one. This Tour de France has been a Tour de France of photos that was so very close. <laughs> That'll be the third one that's had to go to the photo in this amazing Tour de France for the sprinters after a climb like that. Well, there was no fairy tale ending for Fabian Cancellara, but what a dramatic... I mean, Phil, look at the damage a kilometre and a half climb towards the end has done. There's a few seconds lost for some of the overall leaders in the Tour de France on this running. There's Navadowskis just crossing the line. He was the guy who attacked at about one and a half kilometres to go, and all of a sudden, he's lost almost 40 seconds. Well, we'll have to wait and see how our pictures uh, play out when they organise the replays. Here's the first one. Sagan obviously in green. Watch the bottom. Oh. Well, well, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he lifted know. his front wheel off the line Christoph there. thinks yes. Well, yeah, he looks... You know, we saw Andre Greipel do this the other day, and when they went and looked at the photo... Sorry, Andre, it was... Here we go. As they come up to the line... Oh, no! Christoph thinks no, because that is a win for Peter Sagan. Peter Sagan in the throw for the line, Phil, gets that again oh, oh, by oh. a couple of centimetres. That was oh, pretty amazing. And a second, second place for Alexander Kristoff. It's Michael Matthews in our picture who is getting a third place on the line. What an amazing finish. And we said the sprinters wouldn't have their day. My goodness me. Alexander, they don't come any closer than that, do they? No, oh, if I throw the bike, I think I was in front. But uh, the line came a bit before I thought. Uh, I was just focusing on sprinting. And then I looked up and it was already past the finish line. So. So uh, it was a pity because normally I was a little bit in front of him, but still, uh, still I lost it. It hasn't been a lucky Tour de France for you, but do you take any comfort from the fact that you've obviously got your best legs back? Yeah, uh, I must just be positive. I did a good sprint, but unfortunately I was not. Uh, I was a little bit too tired and uh, I didn't really pay attention at the end where the line was. So that was a pity. Did you know you were the winner? No, I was sure I, I was second. But after they just uh, come to tell me I am first.
<laughs> Unbelievable. After a lot of second places, now uh, wheel turning. You know? <laughs> yeah, very crazy, technical, and uh, everybody wants to be in the front after a climb. Everybody just stay on my wheel. And after just, uh, yeah, the sprint starts uh, 400 meters, and Christophe was second, I third, and after Christophe start, and I just, uh, yeah, went out slowly but after uh christophe i think a mistake to make uh, the jump you know and then uh why i won they're both right of course as was david miller in commentary and you can see the difference in body shape here sagan's arms fully extended as he lunges for the line christophe simply riding straight through it katarina sagan was on hand to congratulate her husband oleg tinkoff was on hand to congratulate himself There's the result. Sagan, Christoph, Enger, Degen, Cobb and Matthews with the top five. Fabian Cancellara was first Swiss rider across the line, which wasn't really what he was racing for. Edvard Bosnager was ninth for Dimension Data on Nelson Mandela Day, with Mark Cavendish 23rd after spending his sprinting energy making it up the cobbled climb. Now, the curse of the rainbow jersey never really had much grounding, in fact, anyway. But Peter Sagan has exploded the myth pretty comprehensively this year. His third stage win equals his best tally in the Tour, which was his debut in 2012. And incidentally, the last time Fabian Cancellara won a stage. Was the time for any emotion out there? Uh, not at all. Definitely not at all. I mean, the beginning was kind of strange. A lot of riders tried to jump for break and uh, not really a break went. And there was some no gentleman agreement in the bunch kind of bunch went slow and then again attacks and so I also tried to to go on in the beginning and I mean uh, I saw a few riders they've been not jumping and then I saw them on the end also up there so you have to balance everything and uh, for sure it was it was hard to balance it out what is the best or what it could be the best solution but I think uh, I defended uh, myself not so bad I mean uh, I think um, it's okay like that. I mean, I'm not a super sprinter, and to make a, this is what maybe people think I can do always to just sneak away or make this small like, attack. I think uh, after two weeks is is also not possible, but it's okay like that. After spending so long out front together today, Tony Martin and Julian Alaphilippe rolled in joint last just in front of the broom wagon and picked up the tour's first ever joint prize for most aggressive rider. Simon Yates stays in the white jersey with his lead of 303 over Louis Meinkis untouched. And the top 10 overall was similarly undisturbed by the day's proceedings. With the 39th yellow jersey of his tour career, Chris Froome now moves into fifth on the all time list and he'll take it into the rest day and then the final phase of the tour. I'm looking forward to the Alps. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm motivated. I, I think the team's been great. Um, I'm really looking forward to these last few days now. How do you rate yourself? How do you rate your team compared to the other two times you won the Tour de France? I think the team's in fantastic shape. I mean, I don't think we've ever been at this point in the race and still had nine, nine riders left. So that's, that's, a, that's a great advantage for us. Um, the, the guys are doing well. The morale's good. Obviously, we've, we've got the leaders, Jersey. We've got a lot to fight for still. Um, looking, yeah, just looking forward to getting back into the mountains now. Tomorrow's a rest day. What's the plan for you? Um, press conference, as normal. Um, and then uh, it'd be nice to get out for a ride with the lads and maybe stop for a coffee somewhere.